click the bell icon to get latest videos from ikeda hello friends so welcome back to the subject of machine design one we are right now learning about endurance limit and its estimation so let us proceed with it the students in the last session we have seen what is the meaning of endurance limit and we have seen how it is obtained so basically endurance limit is all about the experimental procedure now in each procedure there has to be failure of the material and since the failure takes place there is a possibility that the test has to be repeated for the same material or from the same specimen for n number of times and this will be a tedious procedure if we have to gather a lot of data with the lot of material combinations that we have so basically the procedure is tedious and time consuming now there has to be some alternate method so there is an approximate method which was discovered and spreaded in terms of the factors now this method considers certain factors which will affect the actual reading and the ideal reading or the theoretical reading now the theoretical readings are given by the empirical relations and the theoretical relations are to be considered for this now it was told or, or it was observed that the actual readings obtained by the experimental procedures have close relation with the ideal situations so they formed a linkage between the ideal situations and the actual situations now let me mention that ideal situations are related with the standard specimen that is used maybe a casting material or maybe an alloy material and a corresponding actual component no doubt that the actual component has many limitations for example the actual component is prepared using the actual methods processes and there are many aspects that we need to consider which affect its materiality and other things but as far as the standard specimen is concerned it is very difficult to relate these two things because standard specimen undergoes a proper finishing it undergoes a proper machining where it is created for the specimen testing and that's why whatever results were obtained using the specimens they were related by means of certain factors with the actual endurance limit so let us see how they are related in approximate method there are two notations that we need to consider it is sc dash and sc students you need to understand that sc is nothing but the stress value endurance limit stress value so sc is the endurance limit stress of a beam specimen that we have seen in the last lecture it may be of any material and of different shapes whereas sc is the endurance limit stress of the mechanical component the actual component that we are going to consider in practice now in that case uh, different empirical relations were proposed for example for steels the ideal value let us call these values are the ideal values of the elastic limit or the endurance limit for this particular thing are related with the tensile value or the ultimate tensile values so the ultimate tensile value is related in this manner for steels it was observed that the endurance limit is exactly half the ultimate tensile load we can see that there is a reduction of exactly half the value that is available for the strength in case of cast irons and cast steels which are the brittle materials in nature the value came down further by 0.1 and it become 0.4 times the ultimate tensile value in case of aluminum alloys it was found that it is again equal to 0.4 times the ultimate strength or ultimate tensile strength of the aluminum alloys but in case of cast aluminum alloys it was found that it further came down and became 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength of the cast aluminum alloys so in short the endurance limit the final limit the maximum amplitude of the stress value due to the cyclic loading that we can expect has been reduced by certain percentage with respect to the 
tensile or the ultimate tensile strength of each material. So these are just some of the examples and certain relations were obtained for n number of materials and their combinations which are very much useful in determining the things. So students we need to understand that these factors were defined or these factors were derived based on certain sub factors. For example 50% reliability is considered for this. They had considered that of the given part any time only 50% part will sustain. So they have considered a sufficient margin so as to relate those equations with these empirical equations. Then factors to be used to derate or reduce the limit, endurance limit of specimen to account actual limit of material or the component. We need to consider this factor, the factor that we are discussing about which will actually reduce down the expected endurance limit of the actual component as compared to this specimen one because we have seen that in case of actual component there are more restrictions more constraint more design aspects that we need to incorporate as compared to the ideal specimen and that's why considering this specimen factors we will reduce down the endurance limit of this particular component so it is always about the component and the specimen the specimen will give you a higher value an ideal value but due to the presence of these factors or the other complexities in that particular component that limit will come down so that we have to consider the lower limit for the actual design. Now the empirical relation is stated in the form of it's a very straight equation that is the product of this n number of factors which we are going to consider soon and the specimen limit will give you the actual limit of the elastic or the elimination limit that is the endurance limit. So these factors are given by k suffix a, k suffix b, k suffix c, k suffix d and they are known as surface finish factor, size factor, reliability factor, modification factor to account for the stress concentration. There are certain modifications always done. Now since we have learned that stress concentration does affect the actual design we need to incorporate certain modification but due to the modification come into picture there are variations into endurance limit and that factor also need to be considered so let us look at these four factors differently separately then we'll understand how they are actually affecting the actual design starting with the surface finish factor now we need to understand that there is a difference between the specimen and actual component a specimen is finely finished that undergoes the polishing also so the polished specimen will have the restricted results that will not give us the actual value or the idealistic the real value of the endurance limit why because the components when prepared they undergo the scratches they undergo the marks the stamps or the flaws etc because it is not possible to take care of the components each and every component as that of the specimen which is deliberately prepared for the laboratory experimentation and that's why there are the surface finish factors that we need to consider due to all these factors the component will have the endurance limit much much lower than the specimen endurance limit here specimen we refer to the specimen by means of the experimental specimen here is a sample chart prepared and it shows that for different kind of machining or different kind of surface finishing methods the value of surface finish factor which is designated by ka that changes with respect to the tensile load or tensile strength and it is very clear that for different kind of machining we need to consider these factors so as to reduce the actual endurance limit let's move ahead to the second factor which is the size factor now students one more thing is that we can't prepare the specimen for each and every size of the component that is available in the industry and hence the results obtained with certain specimen let's call a small specimen are having limited results because in reality the component may be large it it will undergo the rapid and the intense failure in terms of fatigue failure and that's why we must consider the size factor also 
now considering all these factors actually we are making up the losses that may take place in the actual design and that's why we design it accordingly now it was observed that the endurance limit was directly proportional with the size and that's why there was one of the examples we are stating here that the size factor is given by this particular empirical relation where d is the diameter of that particular object so in terms of the size itself the factor kv was derived and this particular thing was valid for this particular range of its diameter so for n number of ranges there are n number of relations they were derived now using certain relations it was found that kb has a considerable involvement in determining the actual endurance limit for example the axial loading for axial loading it was found that the size factor was one the third factor was the reliability factor now students it was found that the reliability factor was directly proportional with the reliability of the component the component or the desired reliability of the component actually hampers the endurance limit if the reliability is required to be higher in that case the component will have the low endurance limit in that case it will fail much early than the expected value and that is how the design will be proceeded through so for considering 50 percent as the basic reliability it was found that the reliability factor was one the last one is the modifying factor now we have seen that we make modifications to account for the stress concentration but due to these modifications the endurance limit will definitely change it will either come down or maybe increased to take care of this thing it was found that the endurance limit was directly proportional with the stress concentration and hence the factor was prepared like this so as soon as the modification factor is developed we have to consider that the stress concentration factor also so at the end let me summarize that there are the ways to estimate the endurance limit and that way is an empirical relation which says that the actual endurance limit is equal to or the component endurance limit is equal to the product of these factors ka kb kc and kd and the elastic or the endurance limit of this specimen this is happening because these factors and many like them do actually differ the estimated value and the actual value of endurance limit due to the fatigue failure and hence their consideration is very important in the next section we will look at certain aspect that's called not sensitivity and how it affects the design thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ikada thank you